Hey everyone, as the year draws to a close, I thought I'd take a look at 2017 and what it has offered PC users in terms of innovations in graphics hardware. And well, I've got to admit that by and large, it's been a story of disappointment. Prices of semiconductors have risen sharply, meaning that the cost of a graphics card has increased, while the cryptocurrency mining boom has seen the retail prices of GPUs shoot up still further. And that's if you can actually find one available to buy, of course. But I think the key disappointment for me has been the lack of new products and how some graphics cards have failed to live up to expectations. But let's kick off with something a bit more positive. My pick for the product of the year. Not exactly a difficult one this because there is literally no competition. It's got to be Nvidia's GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. So here's the thing, we are moving into the 4K era. Display prices are dropping. Games are being built with one eye towards Ultra HD. But at the same time, the PC user loves his or her 60 frames per second gameplay. Now the GTX 1080 Ti isn't a magical cure that will let you run all of your games at full native resolution full frame rate but it's easily the best product we have for the job right now okay so let me illustrate why the 1080 ti is a breakthrough product here's our classic witcher 3 benchmark and this is gtx 970 and 1060 running the game on ultra settings at 1080p full hd resolution now for my money certainly in terms of market share these products define the level of hardware required for 60 frames per second gameplay and this gives you some idea of how the gtx 1080 ti stacks up running the exact same computational load at four times the pixel count. Sort of works out at a midpoint between 970 and 1060 performance. And with the minimum of settings tweaks, you're locked at 4K60. I've got to say, it looks pretty amazing. And that's the experience you're buying into with the 1080 Ti, and only a Titan will beat it. There's a similar story here in Far Cry Primal. The 1080 Ti falls just a little short at 4K, compared to the 1060's results at 1080p, and both of the Pascal cards leave the old Maxwell favorite for dust. But while I really like this idea of a 4K product able to provide the frame rates offered by our 1080p favorites, I still think we're maybe one or two generations short of the complete article. The Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark here shows the 1080 Ti at 4K lagging behind the 970 and 1060 at 1080p by quite a margin. Now, provided you have a decent CPU, it's pretty easy to get 1080p60 on both the 970 and the 1060, but it does require some cutbacks. I actually think the benchmark isn't an accurate representation of gameplay and suffice to say that at 4K the strain is even more immense. And our old favourite Crisis 3 also shows that the 1080 Ti running at 4K has profound problems matching the 970 and 1060 at Full HD. But yeah, unless you want to pay silly money for a Titan XP which is about 10% faster or the stupendously priced non-game optimised Titan V, well the 1080 Ti is the best 4K performer on the market bar none and with the lack of any decent competition, well, then sort of by default, it's my pick for the GPU of 2017. Runner up, pretty simple choice here, Radeon RX Vega 56. Assuming you can find one at the suggested retail price, you're looking at a GPU that outperforms the GTX 1070 and has excellent overclocking potential. So yeah, I'll be interested to see the third party versions of this, as I think that the cooling is the Achilles heel of this reference model. But the bottom line is that Vega 56 is an excellent 1440p card. Thing is, since the 56 launched, 1070 prices have dropped and 1070 Ti has come along as a direct rival. Now I'm not sure there's a killer blow there for the 56 and the Ti seems to be priced too closely to certain 1080 models for its own good but the market is certainly a lot more crowded now with GeForce cards and maybe that was the point. But this kind of leads me on to another disappointment. Vega 64 is bigger, hotter and more energy hungry than it should be for the performance you get. AMD's failure to convincingly beat GTX 1080, let alone the TI. Now this is a real cause for concern. The bottom line is that competition drives down prices and drives up performance. But with AMD failing to keep pace here, that means that the full fat GP102 processor found in the Titan XP probably won't come to a consumer card in the way that R9290X 
forced NVIDIA to release a 780 Ti. And next-gen GPUs tend to be scaled up, refined versions of current-gen ones, meaning that AMD has an even greater challenge ahead with Vega Plus, Navi, or whatever its next-gen product turns out to be. Vega does a job, but I'm not sure it's the job that AMD initially intended, and I do worry for the future here. Right, well, let's crack on with our next new product of 2017, and there weren't actually that many of them, at the other end of the spectrum. This is the GT 1030 from Nvidia, yours for $70 or £70, but in the UK, I've seen it as low as £50. Now, what I like about it is that it's super power efficient. It has all the media encode decode features you would want from a Pascal card, along with an HDMI 2.0 port. Now, I was looking forward to this one because if 1060 followed 980 performance and 1050 Ti follows 960, I was hoping that the 1030 would provide the same ballpark power as the classic 750 Ti. This would be a great budget offering and man I love budget PC hardware. Unfortunately the 1030 just doesn't really deliver. So check out Crisis 3 here. The 1030 running at high settings is only marginally faster than the 750 Ti running on very high and that's a massive increase in computational workload. 750 Ti on high? Man, that's screaming ahead here. And yeah, there's a similar situation in The Witcher 3 here. I'm trying to open up the gulf here by comparing ultra to medium. No hair works at all, of course. And once again, you can see the 750 Ti on medium absolutely bossing the 1030 while running the game on ultra. Once again sees the 750 Ti only a touch slower overall than the 1030 on medium. My gut feeling here, well, maybe the 1030 was primarily built for the laptop market. 64-bit memory memory bus and just 384 CUDA cores really points to a small footprint chip better suited to notebooks, but it makes the desktop offering anemic. I mean, you can game with a 1030 and I've had some good results on well-optimized games like Destiny 2, but unless you need that HDMI 2.0 port, 750 Ti is just a lot better, especially as it's even more potent in terms of overclocking. So beyond Vega, the GT 1030 and the 1080 Ti, well, we've not really had that much to look at in the graphics realm this year. RX 580 and 570 are both good cards, of course, but they're reheated Polaris efforts. 550, 560, well, AMD didn't sample us on those, which is unfortunate. Elsewhere, Nvidia just stuck with the existing 10 series. Without competition, there was literally no need to change up anything. Overall then, we need to look at 2018 and the arrival of the next Nvidia architecture to see standards pushed on. And I'll be honest here, I'm concerned about the lack of competition at the high end. If we assume that the 1080 Ti's replacement will be 25 to 30% faster, we need to see a huge leap from AMD, and I get the sense that upclocking Vega won't cut the mustard. Meanwhile, the focus may be on Navi to bring the required firepower to the high end, but we have no idea what AMD's plans are for the mainstream. Maybe Polaris shunted onto the 12 nanometer node with an upclock? I don't know, but I'm hoping for more. I guess in the here and now, there are a bunch of great products on the market and prices are starting to settle now. But fundamentally, 2017 has been a poor year for innovation and pricing, and the cost of a decent mainstream gaming rig has actually gone up a fair bit. He's hoping for a brighter future in 2018, but that's all I've got for you now. As always, please do like and subscribe to support what we do. And I'll see you next time, but for now, thanks for watching.